morning. Um, it's Wednesday, August 17th, and I'd like to call the uh, Council on Aging Board meeting to order. We will follow guidelines established for the open meeting law, and we'll follow Robert's rules of order during these proceedings. <coughs> I'm Jean Campanello. I'm vice chair of the board. Staff in attendance is Holly Lutch, director. Christine Moriarty, assistant director. Um, Renee D'Argento, outreach coordinator. And members in attendance are um, Betsy Zug, um, Lori Jones, Alex Roman, and Judy Goldstein. And I would like to open the meeting by um, asking for a review and acceptance of the June 22nd minutes. Second. Any discussion? There is a vote to uh, move to accept the meeting, the minutes of the June meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So move. <coughs> we did have on the agenda um, a representative from the Friends, but that person is ill and is not able to be with us today. So we will move to a financial reports. Okay, so I did change up the report for fiscal year 23. Um, I think the previous reports maybe were a little bit overwhelming with all of the details, so I have simplified them. Um, so I just have columns for each of our accounts, as well as at the bottom here, the starting balance, the current balance, and the total change of the account. Um, I did want to note the, some larger expenses that we had. Um, out of the general fund, we spent $2,000 on newsletter postage for the year for our newsletter. Um, and there was about $10,000 out of the taxi livery grant that just covered a few months of trips. Um, but that grant has been finished. Once the check's clear, I will send the remaining funds of about $591 back to the grantor. Um, does anybody have any questions about the new report? Judy? Yeah, um, <clears throat> so just so I understand, we're no longer getting the report that shows the itemized expenses? No, so I can provide that if you want to see it. Um, I just thought it was a little overwhelming and sometimes we got caught up in some of the um, line items. So I have categorized them um, into appropriate categories. I don't know how everyone else feels. I, I would prefer the itemized report. I, I, I like to see the line items. I think that's... That's important. I do as well. I agree. Okay, we'll go back to the re report next month. I mean, I do like this format. Can we do both, Chris? As a cover sheet. Uh, that's a lot of work. Um, uh, I guess I can finagle something. Sure. We can go back to the original. I think that would that would be fine. If that's what the board prefers, I would rather concentrate on one or the other. So I would rather ask the board to decide which one that they want, just because it is a lot of work. The okay. original one. I think the original one. I'd say, right. Okay. Are there any questions on this report for Christine? Okay. Um, Holly, you can direct this report. Yep. Are we done on the financials then? Oh, I apologize. I didn't do the totals like I normally do. I can do that if you guys want me to oh. verbally state them. Okay. Um, the totals that are on this sheet? Yes. Oh, no. We, we've got them here. Oh, okay. Uh, so on to director's report. So we're actually going to start with uh, Renee. So um, we have a lot going on in the next few months. Um, we have our health fair coming up on September 8th. And um, we have, uh, including town hall departments, we have about 50 vendors attending. Um, and they range from um, uh, not just town departments, but um, different kinds of um, health and medical providers. We're going to have um, some, um, you know, organizations that provide 
durable medical equipment and assistive technology kind of things. Um, there'll also be um, some health assessments. So we have uh, our nurse doing blood pressures. We have a VNA doing blood sugar checks. Um, we have Walgreens doing flu shots. Um, the Worcester Regional Health Board giving COVID shots. And we have oral um, uh, therapy doing um, balance risk assessments. We also have um, here Joy Audiology <coughs> conducting basic hearing assessments. So um, they will be, the people doing the assessments will be in two rooms. I'm probably, we also have um, alternative wellness giving five minute um, wellness massages. So I'll probably put her with, um, in the conference room with some of the assessments and then um, we're gonna figure out the organization of everyone indoors should there be inclement weather. Um, but we hope to have it in indoors and outdoors. Okay. So it's gonna be really exciting. Um, also, um, um, Holly has organized the Think Ahead and that's about um, getting s people who are approaching um, age 65 to understand what their Medicare options um, will be when they when they get to that age and different things like that. Um, in October and November, we have um, more Medicare-related information sessions. We have Fallon Health coming to talk about, um, you know, the the new uh, the new uh, coverage that's coming up, and we also have a certified um, senior financial person presenting, um, you know, Medicare basically taking the mystery out of Medicare, helping people understand what their options are and things like that. Um, we have been starting to get a lot of calls for, um, for Shine, and um, some of them are, you know, people who are, um, you know, looking to potentially change their insurance because they've had, um, you know, changes in their, um, their health <coughs> care needs. So I'm getting more of those calls. Um, what else? And also the survey, um, the results of the survey are gonna be in the September newsletter and you guys have a copy of that. I don't know if you want me to um, go over some of the details uh, for the public, um, but they will be in the newsletter. Um, and then the next step is to, uh, you know, go over the, uh, the results in the context of doing, you know, seeing what we can do with outreach based on those um, concerns. I have a question about the um, survey. Mm -hmm. Has there been any analysis of the data or have you just compiled the results? We've just compiled the results. So is there a plan for what you want to do with that? Yes, okay. yes. So um, so I want to I wanna take, take the results and um, consider what types of outreach based on the way people consume information. Um, that was one of the, the questions. Um, providing outreach to those who, um, who are living alone um, and who could be you know, at risk, things like that. Um, so, I mean, we're already doing some of that, but um, people gave us our, their contact information and we've been updating our My Senior Center database so that we can have, you know, more of a picture of, um, you know, who, who we're serving. Uh -huh. um, so that, that will help with our outreach. So you'll keep us informed of any programs or changes or any of the uh, determinations made from the results? Yes, yes. Uh, does anyone yeah. have any questions for Renee on the survey? Was this survey done before in the past? No. This is the first time? Mm -hmm. Okay. Other than the strategic plan survey in 2018, uh, for the 2019 strategic plan, I do not believe that there's been a survey. There, de there definitely hasn't been a survey since I've been here, and that's been since 2020. Yeah. Right. And, and I don't know what kind of survey that was. Um, this was not meant to collect um, personal identifying information. It was just meant to be more of a general survey just to understand what the needs are, so. Any surprises 
at a quick glance? Any? Um, well, one of the surprises is the overwhelming response. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, the majority of the people gave their contact, their personal contact information. So I was really surprised at that. And um, so many people actually made comments. Um, we asked for comments in the 11th question. Um, but that's another thing to, um, to go through and figure out what are the commonalities that people are asking about. Um, and that will take more time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <coughs> about the comments. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Were they compiled somewhere or is that? They're on an Excel spreadsheet. Everything is, even the comments. Um, can we be provided with that? The spreadsheet? Just the, I'd like to see the comments. I think sometimes the comments sure. are. Do you want the whole spreadsheet data. or would you like just the comments? <laughs> can you just update, well, upload we it to the COA board information? Sure. Yeah, I could upload the whole thing. I mean, it, Oh, that'd be great. Okay, that would be great. Be great. Sure. The, the, um, the data you've provided us, so it's really just, you know, I was curious about what people's comments were. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's it, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, so just to touch upon, oh, so before I actually go into anything, um, Christine has the program statistics that we can go over. Did you want to mention the election? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Election of officers. So I spoke with um, Kevin Mizikar, uh town manager, and we interviewed two other candidates for the COA board, um, but they have not yet been um, um, appointed. What's that? Appointed. Appointed, thank you, I was losing the, the word. Um, so he suggested in um, that we wait until October to elect new officials. So that way the new members will be here for September. They'll have a chance to go through mm -hmm. the file, the COA board, share drive, and kind of get a chance to know everybody because I'll make those um, connections with everybody. Um, and then we can go right into October with the um, elections. Does anybody have a question on that? Not about elections, but about the board. Are, are they in the process of being approved? Yes. Or, okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so going on, so programs, events, uh, Spirit of Shrewsbury Month events. But I'm going to start again with Christine. Um, she'll give a rundown of the program statistics and what we intend to do with the My Senior Center. So um, included in your packets was our event statistics from the month of June. So this is a breakdown of all of the check-ins by program. Um, the first kind of chart here is by category and then it breaks down the classes that fit into each or programs that fit into each category. Um, so for the month of June, we had a total of 793 check-ins, um, but that is sometimes more, one person will come to more than one program. So that's about 206 individuals that checked in at the Senior Center in the month of June. Um, to break that down a little bit more, that's about 37.76 people per day. Um, so I, before you go further, sure. I, just, I just need a little bit of an explanation to understand the total sign-ins and the individuals, the difference is- So total sign-in is every time someone checks in at the kiosk individuals is how many individuals each time you check in so um for example fitness and exercise is our biggest category by far okay. there was 240 sign-ins so 240 times someone checked into a fitness class okay but that broke down to 71 individual people who took our fitness classes throughout the month so yes. so basically it's duplicated and unduplicated mm. So that's, those, those are the two numbers. That's what my senior center gives us. Okay. Uh, so I do want to clarify, we know that more people are utilizing the center than 37 people per day. Um, I would say even in like the men's club, there's more than 37 people that show up. Um, so we have really been pushing with the patrons of the senior center, with the instructors of the senior center to incentivize people to check in at the kiosk. Um, this is how we get our program statistics that I've presented you. This is how we get um, the information to apply for grant funding. So it is really important that we know how people are utilizing the senior center. So 
um, as you may have noticed in the August newsletter, we're doing a raffle. So every time you check in at the kiosk, it counts as one entry. At the end of the month, we will draw three winners. Um, our prizes include gift cards to local establishments like Dean Park and Napoli's, as well as the option to um, take home one of our robotic companion pets. Uh, so originally we had gotten, it's called Joy for All. They make very sophisticated robotic animals for typically for people with Alzheimer's or dementia, just to provide some companionship with no responsibility. Um, so we had put our cat out on display for everyone else to see just so they could kind of get a feel for what we provide at the Memory Cafe. And it was a huge hit. Um, everybody's obsessed with it. Everybody comes up, they pet it, they interact with it. Um, it, it, it it's adorable. So um, based off of that response, we figured even someone who maybe doesn't have Alzheimer or dementia, but maybe doesn't have the lifestyle to support a live animal um, would benefit from something like this. So we have another cat and we have a dog um, that are up for raffle. So uh, we will pull the winner on September 2nd out of my senior center. Um, so every time you check in, counts as an entry. So that's all you gotta do. There's no tickets, there's no money, anything like that. Just check in at the kiosk and that is your entry. Um, so does anybody have questions about like the programs that we're offering, Alex? So the robotic pets. <laughs> yes. I must admit I'm fascinated. <laughs> Will they be at the uh, senior, uh, at the health fair? Yes, so we did get two. Um, if the raffle winners mm -hmm. choose not to take home one of the, the robotic pets, maybe they have a dog or a cat at home and that's sufficient, um, we will yeah. raffle them at the health fair. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, oh, oh sorry. Ahead. So um, we're, we're doing a number of raffles at the health fair. Um, one of them, uh, the requirement is to visit every vendor and get a sticker on a card of every vendor. So that way that fosters people visiting and you know covering all the vendors. The second is um, if they check in at the kiosk, they will be put into a raffle, mm -hmm. so. Yep, Judy. Judy. Any question about the programs? Sure. Um, do we, are any of these programs, some of them are not all that well attended, so I guess my question is, do we pay money for any of the programs? Do you want me to take it? Do any sure. of them cost us money? Put it that way. Um, currently, we're not paying for any programs other than, the, I think it was the Savvy Caregiver, yep. right? So I think that was the only one, and that was $250 for the half year? For the leader. For the, uh, yeah, for, but uh, for a session. Uh, for six sessions, yeah. it's a six session class. Yeah. So otherwise, some of our instructors may ask for a donation, in which case they put out like a little bucket, you know, at the front. And when you're signing into the kiosk, um, it will tell you if there's a fee associated. So you know right off the bat. So if you click on, say you want to go to sale, it says $3 suggested donation. And then you know, and then it pays through the instructor. There's no money that filters through us. Yeah, that's my question. Is yep. are we paying, you know, the yoga instructor? No, and, and, and what no we have not yet <laughs> um, because we have not needed to. Now you can see that, and as Christine was mentioning, the numbers do fluctuate on the number of attendees. And this would impact, let's just say, color therapy. You know, color therapy happens in our lobby area, and sometimes there's only three people that come. But it's not affecting any of our other groups, so, so there's no reason to suspend it. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that um, Christine and I were talking about before the board meeting today was that we are intending on um, visiting each group that comes during the week, as well as sending them an email or a phone call that says, you know, due to this, what we're seeing as far as statistics go when people are swiping in, your class is, whoops, your class is low. Due to that, we're asking them to encourage their participants to swipe in, knowing that if there's another class that comes up which could generate 25 people, a class could be bumped. So it's, it's, up to, it's up to us to maintain um, a strong relationship with the instructors. It's also up to the instructors to make sure that people are doing their end of their part so they can stay in the senior center. Yeah. It, has there been any thought? I mean, there's a few that only have like two attendees or three attendees. 
So maybe there are people who didn't swipe in and it's mm -hmm. six attendees. It's still not. So we well do. Is, is there any thought to programs that might generate more interest? So at this point, we don't have a lineup of people that are looking to get into the senior center. So if there is, so when they, when any instructor comes in, they fill out quite a detailed um, packet of papers and it says, who, like how many people do you anticipate on having? So it's one of those things, again, where we're, we want to take the proper avenues because I don't want to step on anybody's feet. But if they're only getting three, but I have a class that will come in to do 25, there's, you know, we'll give them a, like, you know, a two month, you've got two months and then we have to move on to, to other programs. So we're definitely aware of the things, but we want to make sure that, again, we really push the people swiping in. But we don't have a, like mm -hmm. I said, we don't have a line of people waiting for a particular room. Okay. Uh, yes. Oh, Betsy? Um, am I correct that this, these are the statistics for the month of June? Mm -hmm. Yes. So from June 1st to June 30th. Right. And it could be that these numbers are low because there are people that don't participate in these kinds of events in the summer. Yes. That's correct. I, yes. I think probably a more realistic <clears throat> view of participation would be October or November mm -hmm. when people are back and they're looking for, for reasons to get out of the house. Um, and I do want to clarify something. It's not that Holly, Renee, and I are just sitting at our desks looking at these numbers saying, oh, well, no one's coming to Memory Cafe, so we're going to cancel Memory Cafe. We do go out, we float around, we help set up different classes. So we have a general idea of what programs are more popular than others or what what's not being reported. Um, so we have had conversations with some of the instructors that say, hey, only three people are checking into your class. If I didn't come help you set up the tables, I wouldn't know that you have 16 people. Um, and I would, if something came up, like you guys said, I might replace your program with something that would generate more attendance because I could better utilize this space. Um, so we have had those conversations. It has improved for some of the programs, um, but there are, like Memory Cafe, they RSVP directly with the program leader. Um, and just due to the people that are coming to the Memory Cafe, checking in isn't a priority for them. Um, so we do take into consideration what each program is. Lori? Holly? Two questions. I'm sorry, <laughs> Lori. That's Lori. all right. Um, <laughs> one in relation to that, is it just the one kiosk you have to check in, to swipe in? Yes. So if everybody's coming at once and they might have any kind of mobility problem, they might not want to be standing in line waiting to, to do that. Is there any way we could have another kiosk or is it just too simple for people to swipe and they just don't feel like it? It is a very quick process to swipe at the kiosk. I wouldn't say that we have a mass um, congregation to check in all at once, but there is also the op option to check in when you're leaving. Um, so if it's too busy at the beginning, you can check in at the end. There's the the um, the potential to forget to check in, which sometimes happens. Um, but it, the kiosk itself is expensive. I don't know that we could justify the, the cost of getting a second one. Um, but we do have the outdoor piece. We do have a mobile scanner, which we utilized heavily um, when we had the kind of an adaptive schedule for COVID, when we had some programs outside. I would go out, especially for the men's club, none of the gentlemen had to go inside. I would go around and I would scan everybody's key card and it would upload to that. So we do have that option. Um, it's just not used as much as it used to because people are coming in and they're, they're walking by the kiosk to get to their program. Yeah, the second item that's still listed, which I actually attended at least once when I could get out of the house and didn't have contractors there, uh, was the ukulele and their meeting at Dean Park every two, or I guess two of the weeks, but but they wouldn't have an opportunity to check in, so you wouldn't know if they were going to that or not. Correct. So the ukulele is a special kind of circumstance because they're not meeting at the Senior Center over the summer. We do give them the option of utilizing the space in case of inclement weather or extreme heat, as long as they give us enough notice so we know that they're coming. Okay. Um, but so that is kind of a special circumstance. We do anticipate that they'll be back in the fall and we'll resume counting their check-ins. Thank you. And I, want, I would like to mention that for people that don't aren't able to check in or forget, we can go in and sign people in. 
So people just have to let us know. So, you know, I think it's happened a couple of times even with the board members. So if it's people don't have a chance to go in, just let us know. It takes us two seconds to swipe your name in as being attended. So, um, and some people do call in because they start, especially the volunteers, because they want to make sure they get the volunteer hours in. Um, but there's different ways around maneuvering through all of that. It's, but yeah. people have to be responsible for their, their own time at the senior center. I've never seen a backup of people at the check-in. <laughs> so I'm not sure that it's uh, an issue for a handicap, but. I was more curious than anything. <laughs> um, Judy? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Can we have the um, the volunteers who are at the front desk, um, you know, people come and say, you know, where's the yoga room or whatever? Can we have them um, urge people to sign in? To well, they do check in. Mm -hmm. All of the receptionists okay. encourage everybody to okay. make sure that they sign in. Okay. Yep, that's. I, th I think that's like one number one <laughs> on their to do. And and all of the uh, because our receptionists have to check in themselves to log their volunteer hours, they know how to use the kiosk and they will actually come around the desk and, and help you if you're unsure of how to do it. Um, it is a very quick process. You scan your card, you tap what you're attending, you hit finish. When you see the happy dog, you're all done. Um, so it takes all of five seconds. Um, it is a very quick process. Renee? Yes. Um, I, I would like to note, and it's probably not as apparent in the numbers, that educational programs that provide services to, to seniors and others don't typically generate high participation. However, they're valuable because I have them videotaped. So, um, you know, there's a YouTube link that's um, on the Facebook page, on, on, um, and then it's shown on cable TV for people who don't come to the center and things like that, so. So you would not eliminate programs that have low attendance for any reason other than space needs if that became an issue? Unless we had to, yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and, and, we're, and we definitely want to keep a mixture of things going on. Sure. What we don't want to do is duplicate or triplicate like the like having four bridges or four mahjongs or anything like that. So what we do, we will deny those requests and will suggest that they attend one of the ones that are already existing because what I don't want to do is take away the opportunity to have somebody else come in um, and now what we're seeing is we're seeing a trend so up like at the end of May early June we were seeing a lot of requests coming in people wanted to utilize our kitchens or do another um, fitness group or anything like that with COVID cases steadily increasing, we're seeing less people coming back and asking us um, if, if they can get in. So it's, you know, we're still seeing the wave of um, people coming in. And so we're, we're trying to incorporate getting new people in, but it, it's, it hasn't been easy. Okay. Alex? Yes, I, I, I think I asked for a breakdown of this data a while ago, and so thank you for this. I, will you be able to give it to us, give it to us each month going forward? I certainly could. Um, so I, I <coughs> compiled all of this. It's not exactly how my senior center breaks it down. Um, so just pulling each individual category takes some time. I could certainly do that. Or if do, would you just prefer the category overview, the top chart? Well, they're both helpful and interesting. I don't maybe because the numbers are low, we wouldn't need it every month. Um, if quarterly would be easier, uh, I don't know how you have the data compiled on an Excel spreadsheet. I guess. So my senior center um, does generate these for us. I can uh, um, export it to an Excel sheet. Um, each one of these breakdowns is its own Excel sheet. I have to pull that report individually. That's just why I'm asking if you want that. It just takes a little bit more time. Or if you want, I can provide the category overview and the average daily check-ins. Those are simple enough to pull. Um, but I could certainly do this. I would just say, um, just for the sake of the the time and the things that we have going on. What I would rather do is give you the, as Christine's saying, the overly report monthly on the top, and then quarterly, we could uh -huh. give you the update. So you could compare what the months are generating. I think it would be easier. It would certainly be easier on us. Um, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, I, I agree. That'd is be that fine. Okay? Right, yeah, I'd like to see the trends yeah. somehow. Do we uh, have any? Go ahead, I'm sorry. If I, I may stop in just to, 
have you show me what the data and reports are that are available. Sure. I'm curious if you wouldn't mind. Not a problem. Do we have data that predates any of this information? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I can pull statistics as far back as the senior center had my senior center. Um, so I just pulled one month as a snapshot so we could see recent data. Um, I chose not to do July, just as Betsy said, a lot of people go on vacation, so the summer statistics are, are not as favorable. Well, um, what could be useful is comparing time frames from year to yes. year. But perhaps if we could have a report of the data after COVID, when the senior center opened after COVID, because I know there was nothing going on prior to that. Um, I, I think I'm a thinking. 2019, I think including 2019 and maybe skipping over 2020 uh, and maybe even 21, because it's like we were doing a lot of stuff from mm -hmm. home. I don't think any of that would be helpful to anybody, okay. but maybe 2019 to 2022. I do want to clarify too. Um, so we did bring back a lot of the programs post-COVID that the Senior Center had, but we started with a fresh new schedule. So some of these did not happen pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. um, some of these maybe were different days, different people, um, different instructors. There were some instructors that didn't want to come back, so we had to find a new yoga instructor, uh -huh. find a new Zumba instructor. So um, I don't know if it would accurately reflect okay. that it's not the same programs that are happening sure. okay that's good how long Lori. have how long have we had my senior center since 2019 or earlier mm -hmm. earlier i think it's been about 10 years but it's way I prior think it was to 2003 us. thank you i have a question about the memory cafe are those numbers pretty I mean, that's pretty low those are not accurate numbers um so as i said previously um, checking in for them is not necessarily a priority for some caregivers you, you walk in the door and you go to where you need to go um, because wandering around sometimes it can be disorienting or distracting for the person that you're bringing to the memory cafe so Mary the memory cafe and uh, program leader does take an RSVP because we provide meals for everybody right um, so I could get those numbers for her. They just don't check in. So I don't. I haven't plugged them in. Well, that <clears throat> sort of resonated because I know last month we moved four thousand into the meals for mm -hmm. the memory, and I'm seeing only two individuals. Here. Well, remember that's June. I know. Yeah, um, but I do have something else. So the library <clears throat> also offers a very well attended library cafe, um, uh, memory cafe that we're looking to try to see if we can incorporate some of all of our efforts, if you will, so we're not duplicating things and maybe one time be at the senior center, one time be at the library. So I'm trying to work with the library over there to do it. But as Christine mentioned, this is a, you can imagine the attendees that come, sometimes they're able to come and sometimes on a whim they just can't get here. So um, the, they're definitely, we leave it up basic more so to the, to the memory cafe instructor to make sure that they tell us how many attendees are coming than the actual attendees, okay. just because they're very busy. Is it worth it to then take your, um, your mobile and when there is a memory cafe, have one of the volunteers go in and just you know, swipe or I don't know if it's a barcode, you just press it or we, just so we, that we you could. have more accurate numbers because that just, for that, for that group, I mean, you're already dealing with <coughs> memory issues. It's not surprising either that, like you said, that you don't want the caregivers to have the, the person they're with be distracted, mm -hmm. but also <laughs> they, or they might not remember. So one or the other. But it might we be could worth it. That's use, kind of important for the senior center, I would think. We could certainly use the mobile scanner as an alternative. I think it would just be easier to get the list of attendees from Mary. And like Holly said, we can manually plug them in, and that I think would just be a faster process. And it wouldn't need to interrupt their program to say, "Where's your card? I need to scan it." Okay. Um, so we could certainly do and that. And the only reason forward. why we're saying that too is. Friday that time on Friday afternoons, many many times, all of us are somewhere else. Um, and not all of our volunteers are uh, understand how to use that piece of equipment, but we definitely have backups in place for sure. Thank you. <clears throat> Renee, were there any, um, in the comment section of the results of the survey, were there any um, program ideas that kind of stood out on 
Um, I have but, not read all the comments. However, um, you know, when I first <coughs> when I first started, I didn't think I would get the response, and I thought I'd be inputting things myself. Um, so I did the first something like 280 of them. And um, a lot of people wrote that um, that they that they enjoyed some activities that are no longer available, you know, like pitch yes. or whatever. Yes. Um, so we'll take a look at that. Well, I know on some of the, the few that I did, that was kind of a <clears throat> an issue that kept coming up. I wish this were back. I mm -hmm. wish that were mm -hmm. back. Exactly. Um, so I do. Just to kind of add on what Renee said, um, pitch has been highly requested, but no one that's requesting pitch knows how to play, um, <laughs> which is kind of problematic. Yeah. So if anybody does know how to play pitch and would like to kind of provide that instruction, we would be more than happy to put that on the schedule. I just have no idea how to play pitch The myself. same thing with line dancing. I'm just going to put yeah, that yeah. in. Yes, line dancing has been highly requested, but no one knows how to instruct a line dancing class. <laughs> um, so that's kind of some of the problems that we've come up with, that people say, oh, I'd really love if you guys had this class. I'm like, yeah. okay, but can you teach it? Because mm -hmm. I can't. <laughs> well, another, another common comment was, um, I didn't realize the senior center offered these things, and I'm going to see if I can attend or right you know yep. so it was it was basically also a marketing tool yes. um, to make people aware of all the things mm -hmm. that we offer at the senior center yes I think one of the the things that helped for sure for Renee's survey is the um, self-addressed stamped envelope to come back for sure mm -hmm. um, because I, I, I can't tell you the last time I had a stamp in my house <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm sure that that had something to do with the overwhelming response that she received for mm -hmm. sure did many people do it online? Not too many, I don't think. Christine, you're the one who... Um, so I can't necessarily, because all of the surveys were eventually entered into the online format, I can't necessarily see what was entered online organically and what yep. the volunteers entered. Um, I do think that we got a pretty good response. I got pinged every time a survey was entered which was great in the beginning because it was exciting to see them add up and then eventually it was my entire inbox um, so I had to turn it off so um, I do think that we got a, a good amount organically through the online survey but I do think the majority came through the paper okay. answers, right? terrific yes Alex so uh, this is a lot of data and I know you're compiling a lot of data for a lot of reasons I really appreciate it and I know it's a lot of work uh, to just do it by one at a time. So thank you for doing this. It's really valuable. Would you like me to move on? Um, your yes. program. So, yep, so um, the next one, so we just talked about program statistics. Um, <coughs> next one is update on policy subcommittee and I'd like to turn that over to Judy. All right, policy subcommittee has met uh, four times and we have worked our way through the document and um, we're meeting again next month at which point we sh will come up with a final draft of it um, and the town manager has requested to take a look and review the draft before we give it to the board for a vote so after next meeting I expect to be have a document prepared to present to the town manager so that he can approve it and then we will um, present it to the board for discussion and vote. Uh, the other thing is we have also given ourselves the task of revising the gift, um, the gift account uh, draft from 2018 because that was just a loose end that wasn't picked up. Uh, so we'll be taking a look at that next month as well. Thank you. I, I don't know if you want to ask if there's any questions before I move on. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Uh, so number three on programs and events. So the Alzheimer's Association reached out to me um, about a month ago and wanted to know if we wanted to be, participate in um, the walk. So I've, I've personally attended what I started to coin Alzheimer's No Walk Walk. Um, and one of the reasons is because we have so many things going on in September and the walk I believe is October 3rd in Worcester. There's a central location. Um, I honestly just could not put something else on our on our plates. Um, 
but you all see that there's a flyer there with a QR code if you want to donate or if you hit the QR code, it also will give you information on the Worcester Walk. Um, our goal is 1500 and I'm sad to say that there isn't anything right there, but I also put that responsibility also on myself just because I haven't had an opportunity. And to be quite honest, I didn't, I, I usually enjoy, like, I need a heads up, like a month or two in advance to get like that little bit of a extra step. Um, so I already have it programmed into my calendar for next year. So um, I'm looking to put more effort in it next year since we're not gonna be duplicating a lot of our September events next year. Um, so that will be one of my main priorities for next year's. But I did wanna let people know in case you saw our name out and about. We definitely wanna support um, the Alzheimer's Association. They've been fantastic. Um, but you know, it, it is out there if people want to join, and if they, you don't donate to ours, I would would hope that somebody will donate to the the general walk itself. Mm -hmm. um, any questions on the Alzheimer's walk? No walk, walk. <laughs> <laughs> um, if not, moving on. So <clears throat> I'm not going to um, talk any more about the health fair because I think Renee did a really good job on that. The only thing I will add is that we have a very um, generous gentleman. His name is Bob Dakota. He works for the Boston Red Sox. And um, knowing that I'm a baseball fan, um, he was able to get us the 2018 uh, World Series trophy to be here for that day. So people awesome. can come in and take pictures. Um, huh? So he'll be here because uh, it needs security. But it is an opportunity for people to just take a couple of photos. Um, and who knows, maybe those photos will bring us some good luck and the Red Sox can pull it out this year. Um, <laughs> You're so, asking a lot. Well, I'm, I'm still crossing my fingers. I'm still a baseball fan. So, um, so that, that piece will be here. Um, as well as we are having some um, appetizer stations that we're getting from Napoli's, which will include vegetables, fruit, and uh, cheese and crackers. So um, those will be in, in the main um, event room, you know, just to keep people something in their belly because we will not be having congregate dining. We, we um, canceled all of the um, programs for that day um, to enable us to work with the vendors and to get the, the senior center set up. Um, my also suggestion to that would be anybody that's available to help um, volunteer with whatever might be needed I would suggest that you just contact Renee directly um, and she'll be able to work with you the next one on there is the senior center celebration on uh, September 13th um, very excited we've already started selling some of the tickets um, and at, just to reiterate and I think Christine already talked about this at one point board members uh, um, can come and obviously attend for free because you've um, done so many things to volunteer. If you have a guest that you want to come, please let us know as soon as possible. So because we are putting um, the board and board of selectmen and town management in one particular area and then putting the rest of the attendees there. Um, Jean has um, been a huge help with me and we have the Assabet Valley Master Singers coming. Um, to perform for us. And I do believe you're coming this month, right? To check out the... I am meeting him on August 22nd, I think at 11 o'clock. So okay. I can send you an email too, if you want to. Yeah, um, I think I already have it in there, but if you can send me okay. a reminder, that would be helpful. Okay. Um, so they're gonna be coming and entertaining for us. Once they leave and we go into dinner, um, we do have another gentleman who's gonna be just playing light acoustic music just to get us through the rest of the time together. Um, and at that same time, do you want to talk about the recognition? Sure. Um, Louise Russell, as you know, has resigned from the board, and she has been such an integral part of the Senior Center for so many, many years um, that I thought it would be nice to recognize her. So we just developed um, a little recognition, put some nice wording on a plaque, and um, the town manager will present that to Louise during that time frame before luncheon starts um, at the Senior Center celebration. The only thing I want to add to that is if anybody, if anybody from the board would like to get up and um, speak at all, there will be about a half an hour in that time frame. Um, <coughs> I've asked my staff if they want to come up and say anything. It's very fluid. I just want people to have fun, be relaxed. 
um, and enjoy finally being able to celebrate the Senior Center after 22 years. So, um, and with that, we also have a volunteer sign up at our, at the Senior Center. Quick question, just for the minutes, Holly. Uh, that half an hour when you're encouraging people to stand up and say a few words, a few words about Louise or a few words in general? In general. About, okay, yep. I just yep. want to in make general. that clear. So the, the, t the time frame is from 12.30 to 1, there'll be appetizers and people will be finding their seats. Starting at 1 o'clock to 1.30, it will be any guest speakers that we have and that recognition will happen at the same time. Starting at 1.30, we'll go into the music and dinner and then it will go into the acoustic and dessert and things like that. So um, moving on, just to touch on uh, Think Ahead, like Renee spoke about. So we have uh, three speakers, one of them, and now this is in the evening of 922, which is a Thursday, uh, from 6 to 9. We have AARP coming, we have Shine coming, and we also have um, AARP Shine. Oh, ESWA. ESWA, <laughs> so sorry. sorry. Um, Elder Services of Worcester. So they'll each be speaking about some of the, the things that they do in general, not one specific topic. Um, but it is to help those 50 and over um, to kind of get an understanding of the changes that do take place because a lot of people, what we found, and I think the board can agree, is when somebody's turning 64, or almost 65, it's like everybody starts to panic. But a lot of it is just misinformation, miseducation. And I think that comes from the town's part, comes from our part, um, certainly comes from primary care physicians' parts. But um, we just, we're trying to get a jump ahead on that. And I am happy to say that there's a couple of senior centers that would like to take and do this after we do it. So we'll keep going, maybe not. So we might skip a year, but maybe Westboro will do it, Northboro will do it. Um, so everybody has really uh, like liked the idea of having this opportunity. And will this be open to other, with two residents of other towns? Yes, yes, this is um, any, so I put on the flyer, anybody from 50 to 150, if they wanted to come. Um, 50 years old age um, to come to just kind of get an understanding because I know a lot of people take care of their loved ones um, that might not know this information and it will be recorded we will be sharing this have you um, informed the surrounding towns yes. councils yep okay yep. so uh, we let MCOA know I put it um, on the main distribution website so everybody can see what everybody else is doing yep any questions Lori and you maybe you said it and I missed it, but the the health fair you have listed as nine six, but it's actually nine eight, correct? It is nine eight. Okay, just on number four. Oh, yep. Just to make sure. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, the only other thing that is not listed on here that I just briefly mentioned, but it's not it's not really under us. Um, there will, will be a Spirit of Shrewsbury tea on Sunday the twenty fifth. That is being um, done by the Friends of group. Um, so the Senior Center will be open for just the tea. We'll be offering the transportation for the Spirit of Shrewsbury. So there'll be van shuttles um, back and forth. Um, as well as the van will also be available at the Think Ahead program. So anybody that wants to come, even though it's after our working hours, they absolutely can. Um, and as well as the health fair vans going from where to where wherever they need us to go to yep so that could be the housing authority but it could be from mm -hmm. their homes so yeah. people can just can utilize that transportation opportunity and uh, excuse me okay. what's the date of the spirit of shrewsbury um that weekend so i think it's the 23rd i think it's friday 23 24 and 25. it's the last weekend in september okay thank you and there will be a stand for the um seniors out front for so parade Ma viewing maria has um explained that there will be vip seating for seniors mm -hmm. um, at a prime location for the parade <laughs> um, and then after the parade they will transport the seniors to the senior center for their tea luncheon mm -hmm. so lots of things going on in september for sure busy month yes, yes. <laughs> very busy are there any questions Okay. Great. Uh, so one of the uh, last 
items is the MCOA Fall Conference. That is being held um, in Falmouth this year. And I did send an email out to the board. I am unable to attend this year because I will actually be in Montana. Um, and I'm super happy that I'm going to be in Montana. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. Um, but we do have opportunities for board members if you would like to go. I would highly recommend that um, you look at what the topics are each day. I found that there weren't a lot of topics that would help us in the present of where we are, but there were some. And, um, but the board might feel differently. So if anybody is interested, I know Alex, I know that you wanted some. So what I will need is just to let people, let me know, let, or let me and Christine know what days you want to join up. Are you getting a hotel? And then we can work with you on um, reimbursement for miles and things like that. Okay, thank you. Laura, what was Laurie. the date for that again? That is October 22nd, 23rd, 20, 20, 21, 22, and 23, I think is what it is. I'm looking it up. If you're unable to go, Holly, is there anyone else on staff that might go in your We don't place? have anybody on staff that's able to go. Um, there are just a couple of restraints. There's some concerns with COVID. Um, but this is why I wanted to open more op opportunities for the board to be able to go. Okay. It makes it difficult when it's overnight and, you know, you have to be away. And a lot of us has, have families and things like that. It definitely makes it difficult. Um, they do offer a lot of opportunities during the year to take other classes, which I appreciate, but unfortunately this year it just seems as though time constraints are, are an issue for a lot of my staff. So I do have the dates. It's October 19th through the 21st. So Wednesday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Or sorry, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> We'll get there eventually, I promise. <laughs> so it, what days again? The 19th, 19th through the 21st. 21st. Okay. Um, so if any of the board members wanted to stay over, it is at the Seacrest Hotel in Falmouth, as Holly stated. Um, so check-in is on Tuesday. That's where the Tuesday keeps popping in my brain. Okay. Anything else, Holly? Um, so something not on the agenda. So... Well, are we, we're under new business? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, so... None of us knew that we wouldn't have rain for three to four months. And unfortunately, our gardens have taken quite the toll um, out there. They've, um, unfortunately, they're, they've fallen. They're falling apart. They're breaking. They're dying. It's not aesthetically pleasing as it once was when, um, when they were first built. So um, one of the things that I would like to do going forward is to have them removed um, before the September events. Um, to allow more time for and space for vendors to be there. Um, I would invite you to go over and take a look at them. I think you'd understand once I tell you why they look um, the way they do. Do they look like the sunflower plant? My sunflower plant, I have to tell you, I talk to that thing, I pet it, mm -hmm. I come on the weekends, I'm like, I, I'm trying to, everything I can to, to keep that alive. It needs two jugs of water in each it, Yeah. <laughs> um, so unfortunately, and like I said, you'll see, the, they're falling apart, the gardens are falling apart. Um, we got, I, I feel as though we had really, really good use out of them, but at this point, um, it's really, nobody's taking care of them anymore. It's, it's. There's no use for them. Okay. Um, I see. Lori. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, being a gardener and seeing how sad and how hard it is for me to keep any of my plants alive this summer, I just, my only question was, are you want to have the planters removed or are they in bad shape or is, is yeah. it just because they're older? No, th these planters are only two years old. The structure of them, um, is that they're just falling apart and they're more work to put together than okay. they would be to remove. Now there's a part B to what I'm saying here. We were just recently um, granted a mass DOT grant for um, $28,000, a matching of $28,000. So we put out $28,000, mass DOT gives us $28,000. We had a meeting with mass DOT to make sure that we understood exactly where those funds could go we are using them for salaries. 
So what that is going to do primarily is it's going to release one of the salaries that we use out of our formula grant um, for our part-time worker, which means we now have an extra $28,000 this year to spend. Um, so one of the things that I would like to do is try to work with contractors in town to see if they can build us a more structured, um, stable garden for outside. Something that's on the ground, something that's professionally done. Um, I do believe with everything that I am that, that it's needed, it's wanted, it's utilized, it's used. Um, it's just the ones that were built now, unfortunately, just their structure didn't hold up to, to what we had hoped. So I would like to talk to the board, you know, in the next coming months about utilizing funds to really build a better garden outside so people could use it. And with that, I'm talking about stamped uh, stone dust. So it's utilized for ADA residents that can come in so they can use their wheelchairs, their walkers. Um, and really having something in a bigger area. So I need to work with public facilities to find out what space would be good for that. But I did want to just kind of put it in the board's ear of, um, it's very sad that this, is, that unfortunately it didn't work out, structurally and weather-wise. Um, but I would like to, to utilize some, some of the funds going forward for the early spring to try to build and create something again. How many, how many um, individuals work on the gardens so initially we had i would say six to eight and then it turned into pretty much everybody that comes into the senior center will water pick um fluff weed <laughs> um and so we definitely have learned from some of the things that going forward what we're going to have to do because we're going to have to put some kind of guidelines for um for the garden but People go out there all the time. Some of my staff gets up and they just need five minutes away and everybody goes to the garden, you know? So, um, and it's one of, it's so aesthetically pleasing when it was first built, it really looked beautiful out there. We got a lot of compliments, um, but now it just looks run down and it, does, it, it doesn't promote what we, what we want over there. Um, who was it that originally built it? It was um, an Eagle Scout. His name was um, Anthony Biscotti. So we've had, this is our second year in a row. Um, and unfortunately the structure just hasn't hold, held up, but he, it, him giving this opportunity for us really opened our eyes to the things that it can bring to us. I mean, it, you know, it brings health, it brings mental awareness, um, social, uh, everything. So we do appreciate the fact, cause we hadn't known that until he, he gave that to us as a gift, um, which is why we want to keep it going. Well, again, as a gardener, I find it very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. And I can see why other people would just like to be out in, in nature. And some, so if we could use the money effectively to have a beautiful and, and efficient and effective project, mm -hmm. you know, for, for people to be able to utilize, um, I'm all for that. I don't know how everybody else. <laughs> if the money is used this year mm -hmm. from that grant, mm -hmm. um, to pay for a salary, mm -hmm. what happens next year? So we have to reapply for a grant and sometimes, so sometimes I apply for a grant and I'll do something a little different. So, so two years ago I applied for the grant to get a new van. So, because we needed a new van. And then last year we did it under operating expenses. So anything that where our vans needed maintenance or anything like that. This year, what we're trying to do is open up a little bit more of our formula grant funds to get the things that we want. I know that, and I'll just throw out a couple of ideas so far, and I'm not saying that I won't be requesting these under my capital request, but our van drivers, you know, they go and they shovel out our vans every winter. Um, they shovel off the snow. Um, we did have an incident last year with where somebody was taking the vans and didn't realize that all of the snow wasn't off. They took a corner and thankfully didn't land on a car, but they did see it land on the side. So the van drivers are asking and requesting a carport, a van port, mm -hmm. so they can park under there. Um, and the t I'm 100% for that. It takes them so much time. They come almost an hour before their shifts just to unload. And sometimes they have to shovel twice because it, you know if DPW comes in before us, 
but then we shovel, DBOW has got to come back. So it's a lot of extra effort. So they've requested something like that. So we, I have a whole um, line items of things that I would like, whether it's using the formula grant funds or if it's going for a capital request. Um, but if you're using that money to fund mm -hmm. a position, mm -hmm and it's not available the next year, does that position still get funded through yes. the town? Yes, yes. Okay. So, so the, the <laughs> position is being funded through the formula grant. The formula grant is a state grant, and we can use the funds any way that we want. Now, we didn't know that we were gonna get this grant, so now it's an opportunity <laughs> that we have some extra funds to use for the things that we normally wouldn't have, especially where they took the regulations off of the green guide on how we utilize those funds. So we're in a very, very good position for fiscal year 23, and I just want to make sure that we utilize it to the best of our ability. And even though the state is allowing us to not have to spend down the money, my goal isn't to save that formula grant money you know, and leave 50000 in for next year, because what I don't want the state to ever come back and say is, you didn't need the money? Right. We need to use it. So, um, so I just wanted to let the board know of the, the the how that account is running, which is good because we'll. I want to spend down that formula grant for sure. Yes. yes. I just want to elaborate on what Holly's saying. An important point to remember is that prior to last year, whatever money was remaining in the formula grant, they would take back and they uh -huh. would deduct from our grant the following year. Mm -hmm. So this rolling over is new. Yes. We don't know if it's a COVID thing that they're allowing us to do temporarily or if it will continue forward. So we don't want to get in the habit of, like Holly said, holding on to this money, them saying, oh, well, you didn't use right. it. Clearly, you don't need it. And us getting significantly less the next year. Oh, I agree. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Spend every penny. Yep. OK. So under any other new business <coughs> that you wanted to? Um, no, not really. Okay. No. Um, well, I just wanted to indicate that um, Christine is now our new assistant director, and congratulations on your Thank position, you. and you're doing an amazing job, and we're happy to have you. Thank you. Um, did you want to talk about yes, I have times? New, I have yes. a new business item. Um, the meeting the, uh, concerning the time of our board meetings. Um, previously, our board meetings were at 9.30 a.m., and at the request of a member who is no longer on the board, they were switched to 9 a.m. Um, to accommodate her schedule. She's no longer on the board. I would like to go back to 9.30. Is that? I, I thought you preferred 10. Well, I prefer 10, yes. Actually, I prefer 10. Um, but I said 9.30 because I thought people might agree with it more, but I would prefer 10. Did you look to personally? see Does anyone have It'll comments? Okay. Uh, Betsy? Personally, I like 9. Um, I like to get it done and get it over with, and then the whole day is unfolded. I could compromise at 9.30. 10 would be late. Yeah, that's why I said 9.30, because okay. I, I think I would be prefer I'd accommodate nine the too. morning persons. Yeah. What? 9.30 right. is great for me, because yeah. then if, if we have really hot topics going on and we need to go over a little, then we're not so close to when everybody needs mm -hmm. to race off for some noon event of okay. feeding themselves or whatever else. You, Alex? <laughs> I'm fine with 9.30. 10 would be fine also, um, okay. but 9.30 gives me a little more time if I have to help with that's, our granddaughter. That's why I said 9.30. I, 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 my personal preference would be 10, but I thought 9.30 would accommodate more people. All right. You want me to make a motion? Does, um, sure. Well, does that, um, Factor into schedules that can work on this on the Not, staff side. Nine thirty works for us. That's definitely better. It gives us a little bit more time to prep, and we we usually have like a little kind of powwow, if you will, in the okay. morning. So that definitely gives us more time. I do agree that I think ten goes into a little bit more of our lunches and things like that. So I I prefer t nine thirty. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I I. Move that we change the time of our meetings going forward to 9.30 a.m. Second. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Aye. So moved. And will this begin when? At our September meeting. This is for the September meeting. All right, I want to make sure I get it in here. Okay. And that meeting is on the 7th. The 7th? Wow. No, it's not. No. It is on. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it is on the 14th. Right. <laughs> it's the second Wednesday. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I have a lot of meetings on Wednesdays. <gasps> um, is there any other new business that anyone would like to present? If, if I might, I just would like to, again, I know we talked about this before our meeting started, um, just remind everybody about the COA board information share drive. Um, I'm encouraging my staff to send updates as needed to, for you to look up, um, at the information. If there is something that's pressing or that I think that you need to know um, sooner than that, I will send it into an email as well as putting it into the, the folder. Um, I think that so far it's it's been great. I think it's going to be a great tool for us to use for the new board members coming through because they can take a little time and study all the notes, come with any questions if they have any. Um, but does anybody have anything, any suggestions, comments, or anything, or is it everything good? I've had no difficulty accessing it, and I, I probably need to do it more frequently. <coughs> okay. But how about anyone else? No, Same it's here. Working. Okay. Yeah, it's great. All right. Okay. Is there any old business that anyone would like to present to the board that hasn't been rectified? All right. I do have one question. Yes. Um, I think somewhere someone's working on bylaws for the board. Mm -hmm. That's the policy subcommittee. It's not really. It's not policy. bylaws. It's it's um, guidelines. I forget. We just roles we, we, and responsibilities. Roles and responsibilities <laughs> oh, yes. of the okay. CUA board. Yeah. So that, that's the policy set okay. We couldn't use the term bylaw because it would impact the town uh, that's right. organizational chart structure. Mm -hmm. So we just thought using roles and responsibilities gives us the same kind of ability to do what we feel is important. Perfect. I okay. forget whether the, ti the timing of our next subcommittee meeting versus the um, board meeting. A week before. It's before. It's a week before we should be able to get a, is it a, or is it two at the same week? No, a week before. I can't recall. I'm sorry. No, the subcommittee is on the seventh. We meet on the fourteenth. Well, we'll have a draft. Seventh, um, right. We can share the draft with the board, but the board can't vote on it. Um, I, I spoke with the town manager about that. As I said, he wants to sure. read it before we vote on it. Mm -hmm. But he said we can share the draft with the board, so we can do that. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Yes. Opposed? Yes. So moved. This meeting is um, over. <laughs> <laughs>